Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm coming to you today to ask you a question. What if you did only what was easy? I know. The idea of doing something in your life that doesn't take all your energy, all your time, it, hard work pays off, all the rhetoric that we've bought into as women, and that anything is e that anything easy is not worth having. Have you heard that before? Yeah, me too. So let's break down what I mean by easy, right? So we can break it down between two types of easy. There's a quality kind of easy, and there is a cheap kind of easy. So quality easy has a sense of fluidity to it. There's a gravitational pull forward. Quality easy relies on your inner strength. Quality easy has an abiding respect for you. Quality easy has fewer things on the to-do list and is a brilliant delegator. Quality easy trusts the timing of things. She knows it's better to hold out for what's right than to deal with the mess of extracting herself from a bad compromise. Let me say that again. She knows it's better to hold out for what's right than to deal with the mess of extracting herself from a bad compromise. The minute resentment and irritation set in to a task, and quality easy will go on red alert. She steers clear of aggravation, annoyance, and repetitive misery. Over time, Quality Easy gets comfortable saying no, thank you, to things that are just too complicated and too distant from what she really wants. She is willing to let it go, get over it, walk away, because she has better things to do with her life energy. It's that simple. Well, most of the time. Quality Easy brings a sense of expansion to things. And quality easy is compelling because you say yes to grace. And when you say yes to grace, you're saying yes to the natural flow of life. You lift your face toward the divine, like flowers lean into the, the light. Now let's talk about that cheap kind of easy, the one we're so afraid that we're going to lean into. But let's be honest. That's none of us are here to lean into cheap easy. Cheap is a sucker for a discount. Cheap easy can't see that some losses are actually gains. Cheap easy stays in a stifling relationship because it seems easier than facing the heartbreak and dividing up the furniture. Cheap easy is frequently in a rush, a rush, a smidge desperate and usually scrambling for options. Cheap easy tells little white lies to get things done. Listen, the path of least resistance isn't about shortcuts, cutting corners, or being clever. And it's certainly not about making mediocrity acceptable. It's about optimizing the truth. It's about casting your seeds on the most fertile soil for your best chances for success. You see, easy is sublimely and sublimely logical. Consider all the things that you want to create, produce, accomplish, put out in the world, experience. So many roads that could lead to satisfaction. Start with something, whether it be an action you need to take or a project you'd like to do, but something that is easy, something that you kind of already know how to do, 
and get used to the brilliance of ease. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hi there, my name is Robin Norgren, and today I would like to talk about enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a fantastic indicator of where your true strength lives. It's the immediate, I love it, response. The game you've got to get into, the cause you can't walk away from, the idea that makes you pause and then nod, oh, this is a really good one. Enthusiasm evokes a determined no matter whatness. It wakes us up in the middle of the night with fresh ideas. Enthusiasm creates a flurry of connections and marvelous events that often start with a powerful little phrase. And here it is. What if? That's right. What if? Enthusiasm is a heightened state of consciousness, and it's one of the best feelings that it is, there is to feel. Eckhart Tolle, in his book, A New Earth, says, Whenever there is enthusiasm, there is a creative empowerment that goes far beyond what a mere person is capable of. So, you know, that thing or two that you've been wanting to try and you're waiting for some mm -hmm. sort of skill to um, magically show up? Well, why don't you tap instead into your enthusiasm and see what happens? The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos, having the God within. Eckhart Tolle suggests that enthusiasm is the highest form of awakened doing. Eckhart outlines these three modalities of awakened doing. Acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. Let me say those again. Acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. These three components are the three modalities of awakened doing. Acceptance means being in the situation and doing what must be done willingly. Enjoyment happens when you are fully present and not just doing what you're doing as a means to an end. Mm, let me say that again. Enjoyment happens when you are fully present and not just doing what you're doing as a means to an end. It's not what you do, but how you do it. So there's acceptance, there's enjoyment, and then back to that word again, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm means that there is a deep enjoyment in what you do. Plus, a goal or a vision that you're working towards. Enthusiasm actually knows where it's going. Is that not cosmic fabulous? Cosmic fabulous, that is a word that Daniel Laporte uses in her book, The Firestarter Sessions. But it is beautiful, isn't it? That embodied in enthusiasm is all that you need to move forward in the thing that you actually want to do? Of course, you can't be in a continual state of enthusiasm, and that's usually what stops us, right? You know, we're, we have to keep a clear head. We have to keep our, our, a good head on our shoulders. Um, you know, bills need to be paid and those sorts of things. You have to worry about whether you're going to lose your grounding or get too out there and someone thinks you're ridiculous. But before you commit, sign, take the stage, take the meeting, take the gig, take your place in the intentional unfolding of your life, let's make sure and see that this little thing called enthusiasm 
is actually in pace in place. Because that really is the thing that carries you, right? Here's uh, what Marie Folio says about uh, this idea of enthusiasm. She actually calls it an enthusiasm policy, a policy for how she chooses the projects that she does. She says, if it isn't a hell yes, then it's a no. Enthusiasm is the genuine yes that will uncork your genius, signal your muses to come down, and magnetize the resources you need to be within your reach. Enthusiasm is the beautiful beginning that changes everything. All right, so listen. Sometime over the next couple days, I'd like you to take really just one to five minutes. Sit quietly with yourself, and I want you to ask yourself, when is the last time I've done something that I was truly enthusiastic about? And if it's been a while, then ask yourself this question. The thing that I'm most enthusiastic about today is. Thank you so much for stopping by.